Hello, everybody, and welcome to the United Stands. It's a special Boxing Day uh, transfer special with Fabrizio Romano. I hope you had a good Christmas, Fabrizio. How are you doing? Hello, my friend. Yes, yes, yes. It was great. Thank you. And uh, I wish a happy new year to you and all the Manchester United fans. Thank you. And to you as well. You know, just I have to ask Fabrizio, Christmas Day, how is that for you? Is, is the phone finally <laughs> off or are you still um, But transfers? for me, phone off is impossible. It's absolutely yeah. impossible. But honestly, it's a bit with the family. So I try to relax a bit, but you always have something happening. And then it's a good opportunity to get in touch with people in football. You know, agents, director, you can send a message, say Merry Christmas and then ask something. So sometimes things happen also thanks to this kind of connection. Brilliant. OK, let's let's fly straight into Manchester United transfer news, because we are less than a week before the January transfer window opens now. Um, what is the latest? Because I've seen your tweets this morning talking about Cody Gakpo and Jao Felix. What yes. is the latest with those two players? Are, are we going to get both? Do you think it will be one or one or the other? I don't see both, honestly. Uh, this is just my opinion. Eh? It's not information, but I think also for a financial reason to invest that kind of money would be would be really huge. Then never say never, but at the moment the situation is still uh, on, not on this on this direction for sure. For Gakpo, as we mentioned many times here, the relationship is fantastic between his agents at Manchester United. Uh, what I mentioned today is that the player has not changed his mind. The player is still convinced about Manchester United. He's waiting. He's waiting as PSV and Dovan are waiting too to understand what Manchester United wants to do on this deal because the connection between the agents. And, uh, and the club is very good. The player is prepared to accept a potential contract, as he was in August, because Cody Gakpo, as he stated in public too, has always been open uh, and keen on joining Manchester United. But now it's on the club. Now they need to negotiate with PSV if they want. They have to decide how much they want to invest in that position in January. Uh, and so this is why the player is waiting. The agents are waiting. PSV directors are waiting too to understand if Man United will act with an official proposal soon. But the contacts are already very advanced between player and Manchester United. So they hope to have positive news soon. Uh, it's on the club now. So for Gakpo, I think the situation is very advanced on player side, but it's now on the club to decide what they want to do with PSV. With Joe Felix, is a conversation with Jorge Mendes, with his agent. We know that the relationship has always been uh, very good between Jorge Mendes and Manchester United. They had conversations about Joe Felix, same with Arsenal, uh, not with PSG, because PSG are not in the race at the moment to sign Joe Felix, but Arsenal had conversations too with Jorge Mendes. Manchester United too. There is a feeling around these clubs, they're waiting to understand the final conditions of the deal for Joe Felix. Because we started this Joe Felix story a few weeks ago with Atletico Madrid asking for more than 100 million euros to sell Joe Felix. They were not open to any loan deal. They know that no one is offering that money in January because at the yeah. moment uh, no one is putting that money on the table. And so we have to see if they will change the conditions of the deal. It could be a smart one for May United, for Arsenal or any other English club because Joe Felix wants the Premier League. And so in the next days, I think it will be clear, but it's just a conversation with his agent at the moment, not an advanced negotiation with Atletico yet. OK, so um, if we go back to Gakpo then, why do you think United would be speaking to both Felix and Gakpo? Is that where do you think United would go, I suppose, is the question? Because if, if they can do a good deal with a loan deal, maybe with Atletico Madrid for Felix, and then PSV want 50 million for Gakpo, which way do you think Ten Hag and United would go? Because it's it, it's divi we were talking about it on on the United stand this morning, and I personally like both players, but I would go Jao Felix. I think he's a better talent on a loan. But if Ten Hag wants Gakpo, you've got to get Gakpo. Wh wh which way do you think United are leaning? Do you think it is Gakpo that, that Ten Hag wants? I think there is a key point on this story, and is that the club is for sale. The club is for sale, and they're trying to to sell the club as soon as possible. And I think this is an important part of the story because after spending important money on the summer of many important players, Lisandro and then in the final weeks, Casemiro, of course, Anthony, they know that now spending 60 million euros on a player like Cody Gakpo would be one more big investment. So they have to decide how much they want to spend in January because for Joe Felix could be a loan deal, which is a smart solution probably, but you're investing important money because a potential loan deal would cost, I think, in total between the salary and the loan fee around 20, 15, 20 million euros because the salary of Joe Felix is an important salary. Then there is the commission. So I think it's around 15 million euros, something uh, 15, 17 millions. And so they have to decide if they want to invest that kind of money, but then the player is back to Atletico Madrid in June. And so you have to negotiate with Atletico Madrid in June and they always wanted more than 100 million euros. 
or if they want to invest 55, 60 million euros on a player like Cody Gakpo with a completely different salary because the salary of Cody Gakpo is a normal one, is not uh, really a huge important one as, as Joe Felix. So there is also a financial reason, I think, uh, behind these this deals. It's not just about the technical point of view. I'm sure that Eric Tanag is a big fan of Cody Gakpo because he was pushing the player already in the summer. We know uh, that he shares the same agents of Cody Gakpo. It's not about the agent. It's that he really likes the player. He's convinced that the player has a huge potential. I agree with you on Joe Felix. I think it's a fantastic opportunity on the market. But then you have to think, OK, I'm going to pay his salary. I'm going to pay a loan fee. And then if the player is performing at top level in the summer, I have to negotiate a game with Atletico Madrid. And they will probably ask more than 100, 120 million euros. Uh, so it's about the financial reasons too. So they have to decide internally. And I think this is why the process is low. Uh, this is why we expected Man United to act fast on a new striker. But the process is low. And just just finally on that before we move on, um, with, with Gakpo, do you think Manchester United have got the money to go and spend what would we believe PSV want a record, which was Lozano, 44 million. So it's going to be 45 million or more. Do you think United have the money to do that? Because we, we heard this morning that they might go for a more experienced, cheaper option, of which I can only really think of someone like a Memphis. Um you said that Gakpo would like the deal. United would like the deal. Sure. Do you think that that United have got the money? Because that seems to be the only thing that would stop that deal. I think this is exactly the, the, the point. When we mention the financial reasons and the budget and the club for sale, is that they have to decide if they really want to invest that kind of money. I think they have the money, but it's about the decision. If they really want to invest that kind of money in January, after the plan in October, in November, was to stay almost with the same squad, maybe to sign a backup right back and nothing else. So the plan was to continue with the same squad until the summer and then invest on an important striker in the summer. With Cristiano Ronaldo's situation, everything changed. And so now they are waiting to, to see which kind of decision they will do on this budget for the January transfer window and for the striker. So this is why I think we have to keep all the options open because at the moment they are not speaking to Atletico Madrid or not speaking to PSV Eindhoven because they have to decide how much they want to spend. I think it's not just about having money, but how much they really want to spend. So this is a key point. This is a key point in this story. Let's see. Let's see because um, I think also for Aitanag Tenag it's really important to have a striker. I really hope they will give him what he needs because it's a really key moment of the project for Manchester United. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens with that then. I mean, obviously, I think we want this to happen very, very quickly because um, Ronaldo is gone and we're a little bit short and, and the Jaden Sancho situation. I was going to ask you just very quickly about that uh, Jaden Sancho yes. situation, Fabrizio. Have you heard anything about like when when he might come back? Is this is this something United fans need to be concerned about in relation to his long term future? Or is it just, you know, uh, you know, a little blip in the road where he, he'll be back as a Man United player very, very soon? No, I can say also people close to the player, uh, as Eric Tanak stated, they keep saying that they are waiting. They still don't know exactly when he will be back. They think it's not going to be so long. So uh, it could be a matter of, of weeks to see Jadon Sancho back with the squad. This is the expectation. But they don't know exactly when Jadon will be back uh, with the squad. I can say that Eric Tanag is, is really trying to support the player. He's speaking to the player. Uh, he's trying to prepare something important for the player in the future. He feels that Jadon Sancho's situation could be, in some in some points, similar to what happened to Marcus Rashford. Marcus yeah. Rashford, one year ago, with, uh, with Ralf Ragnick and with Solskjaer in the first part of the season, he was not performing. And then, with Eric Nagy, it completely changed it. Now we speak of Rashford as one of the best strikers in the world because he did great at the World Cup. He did great with Manchester United in the first part of the season. He wants Jadon Sancho to perform at top level in every single game, not to have any problem with the mental side, with the physical side, so this is why he's waiting for Jadon Sancho to be in good conditions and then to bring him back with the squad. So I don't know exactly how long will be the process, but for sure Eric Tanag is trying his best to protect the player and to protect the club because they invested big money on Jadon Sancho. And what he always said is we can't miss on big signings. This is a really important point for Man United to protect the big signings they do. And so this is what he's trying to do and not exposing Jadon Sancho to a difficult moment now with the squad. So let's see when he will be back, but I'm sure that Eric Tanag is trying to, to protect the player. A uh, very interesting story. Uh, many people asked me to ask you about this was uh, a story that came out on, I think it was Christmas Eve uh, from a Brazilian reporter about Enzo Fernandes and a £100 million bid from Manchester United. Now, I think 
uh, in fairness to that report, I think that would be more about a summer move for Manchester United and not a January deal, because I think that would be almost impossible to get him out of Benfica. But Enzo Fernandez, I mean, only a year ago we were talking about him. It was a player that Ralph Rangnick, I think, recommended to Manchester United and obviously yes. went to Benfica. I can't remember how much for, but release clauses are 100 million, I think, or something like that. Is Enzo Fernandez to Manchester United really something that's being considered at the moment? Or do you think that that's probably paper talk because we've got to get new owners and everything in first. But then again, he could be a player that Ten Hag wants. Sure. Uh, let me say, first of all, that I really respect the journalists who share the news. You're a very good journalist, so I respect him and uh, I'm not going to, to deny what he reported. We can have different sources. What I'm told now, speaking also to sources close to, to Benfica and into the board of Benfica, at the moment, the only way to sign Enzo Fernandez is to pay the release clause. There is yeah. no negotiation. Imagine that Enzo Fernandez entered into the World Cup with a value around 60, 65 million euros, and now they are not going to negotiate with any club for January transfer window. Benfica will not accept 100 million euros, 110 million euros, uh, any package. They want 120 million euros or nothing. Otherwise, they will be happy to keep the player to play the second part of the season with Enzo Fernandez in the Champions League after winning the group with PSG and Juventus with Enzo as a starter in, in, the, in the squad and then to sell him in the summer. So this is the position of Benfica and they state that they have no bid at the moment for the release clause. So I also saw these rumors of Man United paying, open to pay the release clause of Enzo, but at the moment it didn't happen. Uh, of course, Man United appreciate Enzo Fernandez. It's absolutely normal. As you mentioned, Ralf Ragnick recommended him and Julian Alvarez uh, one year ago. They are players with Man United know very well. Enzo Fernandez is appreciated, but at the moment there are no active negotiations with Benfica and are not even needed because it's the release clause or nothing. So at the moment, the situation is still, is still quiet. Liverpool are there and many other clubs. So at the moment, there's still nothing decided. What I can add on Enzo Fernandez is if the situation will change, it will be in the first two weeks of January. It's not a deal who's going to be at the end of January deadline day or that kind of stories. It's going to be something fast because Benfica will not accept any kind of negotiation at the end of January. Release close immediately or nothing. So at the moment with my United, it's still quiet. I have the same feeling as you. I think it's going to be uh, a potential name for the summer. I think my United will go for a midfielder in the summer. So let's see what happens with Enzo, if he will move in January or not. Frankie de Jong, again, we will have rumors and we have rumors, but we will see what happens in the summer. But as of now, the focus is on the striker. My United need a striker and they need to invest on a striker rather than on a, on a midfielder. Let's uh, have a quick chat about the right back because you mentioned that situation that Man United might go for a right back in January. Where, where do you think they are on that at the moment? Uh, I did a piece on Sky on Christmas Eve where I was asked what five players I think would make Man United great again. And I mentioned uh, Malo Gusto of Leon, and many of our viewers like him, but I've never heard United link to him. I, I like him because obviously we're big admirers of the low. And I think if you bring a 19 year old Gusto in, like we've got Malice here with Shaw, I think a younger right back to learn and compete with Delo is what I want. Whereas if you bring Dumfries in, he would want to start straight away and would cost money. If United were to go for a right back, um, and we do need one, I mean, I think Delo's out injured at the moment. Where are United with that at the moment? Or do you think they might stick with a Wan-Bissaka now? At the moment, the first priority, um, for what I'm told is that internally, there is a clear plan on the right back. First priority, extend the Ogodalov contract as soon as possible. A part of the, the option trigger until 2024, they will have meetings these days with the agents of the Ogodalot to offer him a new long-term deal. So this is the top priority. They know that it's important to act fast with the Ogodala to offer him a new deal as soon as possible. They already had some conversations before the workup, and now they will resume these conversations to offer him a new deal. So this is the real top priority. The second priority is to find a solution for Juan Bissaka. West Ham, Crystal Palace, Wolves, these are the three clubs uh, with some conversations on the potential deal for, for Juan Bissaka, and so they will try to find a way as soon as possible, but it's really important for them to find a way for Juan Bissaka. I don't see my United bringing in a new right back if Juan Bissaka is still there. So yeah. for the timing of the deal, it's really important to understand when Juan Bissaka will leave the club. And then I agree with you on kind of option they will, they will try to sign, a young right back or a loan deal. This is what they will do in, uh, in January. I also don't see a deal for Dumfries, uh, as I stated here many times. He's appreciated, of course. Eric Tenax knows the, knows the player very well, but he's not leaving for, for less than 40, 45 million. And I don't see Man United investing that money while they are negotiating with Diogo Dalot. If they really want to extend the contract of Diogo Dalot, and I'm sure this is what they want to do because they're really pushing on that one, makes no sense to sign a top right back now in the same moment. So I see them signing 
a loan deal or maybe a, a talented player for the future who can be kind of Malasia deal. As you mentioned before, he's doing very well in that kind of position. And so, for example, Jeremy Frimpong is a player they are following since a long time. He's a very good opportunity. The problem is the price. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen wanted 20, 25 million euros to let him go in January and they still hope to keep the player and sell him in the summer because they are convinced it will make sense for them to sell in the summer. So I will keep Frimpong as an option, as we always mentioned, but at the moment it's not an easy one because 25 million euros for a backup right back when you have to sign a striker too in the same window is not an easy one. So it's a slow process for the right back, but the top priority is Diogo Dalot's new contract. And my feeling is that they have good chances because Diogo is happy at Manchester United. He has a very good connection with Eriten Hag. Eriten Hag trusted him since day one at Man United as he did with Marcus Rashford. And so I think there is a good chance to extend his contract, but now he's also on the financial proposal. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting because we, we're obviously locked in on what happens with with, with Gakpo, Felix, or, or whatever. But the right back is like, well, if Wan-Bissaka goes, and there's talk that Brandon Williams might go as well, you've only got to low, and you've got to bring somebody in. But it, it'd be interesting to see what they actually do do because the the there may be a like you say a loan deal or something like that that people haven't really thought about. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Also, Malaysia was a big surprise in the summer. Right? You remember that Malaysia yeah, was yeah. out of nothing and uh, they decided to go for him in, in 24 hours. Malaysia was a Lyon player. Everything was done. He had the medical scheduled on Monday and May United called on Saturday night and signed a player. So it could be something like that, an opportunity uh, on the market or maybe to go for a player like Frimpong, but it's completely different investment because it's 25 millions. Yeah, interesting. Good. Thanks for that. Um, just on, the, we've had some contract renewal updates um, with the, with the extension of a year for Fred Shaw, um, Delo, and Rashford. It gives them a bit of time to work on longer deals. But David De Gea hasn't had his contract uh, renewed for a year because we believe they're they're trying to sort out a longer deal. What what's your update on David De Gea for Brit? So do you think he is going to take a bit of a wage cut and sign a longer deal, or do you think there's a chance that he could leave for free in the summer? No, there are positive conversations at the moment between Manchester United and his agents. Uh, he understands that his salary is a super salary because it was before COVID. And so uh, now the, the world of football has changed and that kind of salaries are really complicated for, for good players, but not superstars. So if you're not Mbappé or Haaland or, or top, top players, it's difficult to have that kind of salaries. And so this is why my United didn't extend this contract. They hope to have a smart solution for a two or three year deal with different kind of salary for, uh, for the future. Uh, there are conversations ongoing. At the moment, nothing is agreed yet, but David De Gea is really happy at Man United. So I think there is a chance for him to stay. The reality is also that Manchester United, as we know, they are monitoring goalkeepers around Europe uh, to, to, to be ready in case this deal will not go through with, uh, with David De Gea. Uh, we know they are following Diogo Costa from, from Porto. He has a 75 million euros release clause. But in that case, it would be Eric Ten Hag to decide because the goalkeeper position is a really important one. So now the priority is to speak to David De Gea. Uh, I think they have a chance to extend this contract with different kind of structure, as we mentioned. But the plan B would be to decide together with Eric Ten Hag for a new goalkeeper in the summer. We know in January it will be a, a striker and maybe a right back or one or the other. Um, what we don't know is who might be going out of the door in January. We mentioned Juan Bissaka. Uh, there was a story linking a Langer to an Everton loan this morning. Uh, Palestri hasn't really kicked a ball under Ten Hag, but did well in the World Cup. Um, do you, Donny has had a bit of game time, but then didn't play in the Carabao Cup the other night. Um, can you see any a number of players leaving? Uh, United, whether it be a loan or a permanent deal in January. Do you think that's in, uh, apart from wan who we've discussed, uh, yes. Alanga, Palestri, Donny, do you think any of those could be looking to, to move? I think on Alanga it will depend on new signings. So, for example, if they get Gakpo, I think there is a chance for him to go. Also, in the final days of the transfer window in August, he had some opportunities and then was Eric Tenago decided to keep the player, but he already had two, three clubs, including Everton, keen on signing mm -hmm. him on loan. And so, my United decided to go for a different kind of, of strategy. Let's see. I think it also depends on, on, on the winger situation, new winger situation. And um, for Donny... Honestly, uh, at the moment, it's still the same situation. Also, people close to the player are still waiting to understand what Man United will decide. But now Don is 100% focused on Man United. I think he still has a chance to stay and then in the summer to make a final decision on his Manchester United career. So at the moment, there are no negotiations with any club. Also for Don, in the final days of the August transfer window, they had two proposals for a potential loan deal with buy option. And Man United said no, because they wanted to keep some players in that position in case of some injuries uh, with many competitions to do in the next in the next months. So at the moment is still quiet. 
But you know, for this kind of players, I think it's a typical situation we have to follow day by day. So maybe yeah. the second part of January, it could change with new with new opportunities, with new bids. At the moment, for Donny, there are no negotiations already. And uh, just finally, before you go, Fabrizio, I did want to ask you, um, we, where, we, which player do you think is more likely to United at this moment in time, Gakpo or Felix? Well, this is a very good question. I would say it's a 50-50, but for Gakpo, there is a pleasure feeling with the manager. I think May United know that if they don't get Gakpo now, there is a serious risk they will lose the player for the future because maybe in the summer other clubs or maybe in January other clubs will jump into it and sign this really big talent who they had in their list for a long time. So I think for Gakpo there is this special feeling with uh, with Ariton Hag, but Joe Felix is an incredible opportunity on the market. So it depends also on the conditions of the deal for Joe Felix. Let's see if Atletico Madrid will accept very good conditions. Otherwise, I think Gakpo is the favorite. Fabrizio, it's been a pleasure having you on today. Uh, and um, when, I know we're going to speak again in the new year as well. So uh, enjoy the rest of your Christmas break. I know you'll be busy. And uh, thanks for thank popping you. on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks as always. And see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Fabrizio. Speak to you later. Uh, let me just move that on as well. So, yeah, interesting updates. I wanted to put that one at the very end about uh, the, uh, the, 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 you know, what his, pref- what his thoughts are really in relation to... Um, which player will get because um for me it's uh i think i think i think yeah i think i think gap is the logical one isn't he it's the player that eric eric ten Hag seems to want i do think what fabrizio said is really important as well is that that you cannot have it in your head that we can just get jail felix and then maybe go back for gap in the summer i think psv you need to sell i think they will sell and i think if united don't go for gapo in january there will be a club i mean look it could be an arsenal it could be a chelsea but it also could be a leeds or someone like that there will be offers for gapo in january and i don't think united can get away with just not if they want him i think they've got to go for it uh the interesting thing for me is that at this moment in time, there's talks with agents of both Felix and Gakpo, but there's not any talks with PSV. I think that needs to change, of course, because we are on the 26th of January when we're recording this. And and, and uh, it's very, very soon going to be the sorry 26th of December. It's very soon going to be the 1st of January, five days. We're playing games every three or four days in January. So every day in January that we don't bring a striker in is a is a day where we could have a striker in making a difference on the cup and the league. So I think United, basically, it's what I said on the morning show. This is now about money. Um, the, the, the Felix deal isn't cheap. Fabrizio makes a great point. All right, you might spend £50 million on Gakpo and you've got to pay the wages on top of that. But you'll spend about £15, £20 million on a loan deal for João Felix and then he'll go back. And then you've got to spend a load more money to bring him back. So the financial thing is interesting. Um, the money is clearly there. I think they need to make a decision quickly. I mean, look, the club's up for sale. There's options. If you're going to spend the money, you may as well spend it on the 1st of January than the 31st because it's going to have a bigger impact on your potential to get in the Champions League in the summer. So we need to start moving quick. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not tired of the Gakpo deal, but... I. I think we all know what's happening. He wants to come to United. Ten Hag wants him. Spend the money or don't spend the money. You know, let's get on with it. And if you're not getting Gakpo and you do want Memphis, get Memphis in on the 1st of January and then we can all go mad about it or like it. But whatever you're going to do, do it quick because there's so many games in January. So get on with it quick. Um, Let's see what happens with the striker situation. I think the right back situation is very interesting. You cannot ignore the fact that we need a right back one Basaka, I mean, Brandon Williams doesn't even play at right back. I know he's right footed, but is he even an option? He's not been used at right back. I think he prefers left back. One is still for sale. So I think it's, um, we've got to do, the thing is, we've got to do something at right back. Delo is suspended, uh, is injured, but even if he's fit, he can't play every game. So you've got to do something at right back. And I think, you know, spinning for a bit here, there, it's really interesting because we've almost forgotten the right back thing. I get the sense that. Even I sort of go well. Right back will take care of itself, but we have to we have to do something at right back, um, and what we do is going to be very interesting. Um, I don't think it will be Gusto. I don't think it's going to be Dumfries. Frimpong got a mention. We'll have to see. Maybe a loan deal. I think we, I think keep an eye on the right back situation. That's it's not as glamorous as, as as the striker position, but I think we'll do something, and that's intriguing. Um, the Enzo Fernandez update was great. I was looking forward to doing that one actually because um, you know Fabrizio is well connected and. Obviously respected the journalist who reported that United were ready for a bid with Enzo Fernandez, but I think that's more about the summer. But Fabrizio with the update directly from Benfica there, they will not sell him. 
um, they will only sell him for the release clause, and it would have to be in the first two weeks of January, which we're not going to we're not going to offer 120 million euros for Enzo Fernandez in the first two weeks of January. I mean, even if we did, we'd be trying to negotiate that down, and they're not going to negotiate down. So it's a summer deal, by which time new owners. So look, if you want Enzo Fernandez at Manchester United, and I think we'd all be very open to it, it's a summer deal, and De Jong will be back involved then. So the summer deal is looking like. Yeah, the summer. The summer's going to be very exciting if we get a bloody new owner, isn't it? But that's that's where that would be uh, based, I suppose. Um, what else? What else? The Haya contract. I think we know about that. That's going to keep moving on, isn't it? Um, and there was something else as well. What was it? What was it? Oh, I don't think there was. What did I write down? Oh yeah, Memphis. I mean, I just, I, I, you know, I come back to what I said this morning. You know. I don't, I don't dislike Memphis, but you're talking about Jao Felix and Gakpo. You know, it's like being taken around a Porsche garage and a Ferrari garage, and then let's say someone saying, "Oh, let's have a look at the uh, the Vauxhall garage." I mean, nothing against Vauxhalls; they're, they're they're decent, reliable cars. But I've just been to the Ferrari and Porsche garage. You know, I, I don't want a Vauxhall, and 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 that's how I feel about Memphis. And uh, I have driven a Vauxhall in the past. I used to have a Vauxhall Astra, very like, I liked it, very like, very likable car, but. Um, You've just shown me a Porsche and a Ferrari. Um, and I'm not getting into the arguments about whether Gappo and, and Felix are Porsche and Ferraris and what's messy if they're, a, you know, look, there's different brands of cars, I'm just trying to say. Um, so, yeah, look, um, I think the buzz around United has to, has to remain positive. There's a big buzz when Ten Hag talks. There's a big buzz when we think about new ownership. And if you're building something, keep building it. Don't take a step backwards because that's been the problem of the last 17 years. Like, let's keep stepping forward. If the Glazers truly are going to sell up, then you want to sell a better product. And the better product is a you got to look. It's not about what I want. It's not about what you want. It's not about what the bank wants. It's about what Ten Hag wants. That if you follow what the manager wants, you can't be criticised. And that's even the same if you're selling the club because you know what, if the new owners come in and, and he says, I want a striker, and they go, well, you got Memphis in January, and then he says, no, I didn't want Memphis. I took him because it was the only option I could get because they wouldn't get me anything else, but I, I didn't, that's not what I wanted, so it's it's wasted money, really. You don't want to be in that situation, so um, we need to keep the momentum going, um, and, and as I say, my, my, my feeling is that, that Gakpo will be the player that we go for, but it's interesting, and I will say this, spending £50 million in January on a, on a striker is significant. It is significant. And, um, you know, it needs to happen, but it is significant significant investment. And, and, and the funny thing is, and it's not funny, is that we would have gone in for about 30 in August. So, you know, United have dropped the ball a little bit here, but they've dropped the ball because they'd already spent so much on players in the summer that they didn't want to spend another 30 but uh hindsight's a great thing isn't it anyway lots of good updates there make sure you smash a like on the subscribe to the united stand and uh, of course we're back playing tomorrow so uh we'll have lots of content coming in for you then uh i hope you're having a great day whatever you're doing friends family or out and about and uh, some big updates in there and uh big shout outs for a as always take care everyone speak to you all in a bit thanks very much for watching